Good afternoon. We return to the catechism program here at Boston, Kentucky, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Today, the topic that I want to discuss with you is the demonic today. Last presentation, we spoke about heaven. Now, we have a question of that which leads us away from heaven and leads us into hell. So, the demonic today. First of all, we could look at the demonic from a perspective psychologically, we could look at it physiologically, and we can look at the demonic spiritually. What I'd like to do, first of all, is give you today the signs of the demonic in our own country and in people. The first sign of the demonic that you will recognize is this. Mockery. Today, good is being mocked. Evil is being lifted up. If you're for those individuals in the, oh, let's say, question of life. If you're for life, you're, you're some kind of a nut. You're out of the world. Uh, don't you realize that women have their rights and so forth? And so they mock those who are on the line, seeking to keep life as the priority of all existence. For without life, there is no other right. Mockery. We see it in the life of our Lord when he was on that cross. What did they say? He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Ha, ha, ha. Come down from there and we'll believe anything you have to say. So mockery is the first sign. You might say, uh, watch your companionship. See whether or not they put down and mock those that are good or doing good. One time I was teaching in Shaw High School, Louisiana, and one of our young men received an award for being helpful to the elderly. And I had gone over the signs of the four signs of the demonic, and that was part of the class. And that day, uh, here this friend of the class uh, received this particular acclamation. I stood him up. I said, "I want to congratulate you for being a sign of Christ in this world." And one person from the back of the class said, a kissy, a kissy. And everybody turned on that person and said, the demonic, the demonic. And it is true. The demonic can live within each and every one of us. And the first sign of it is that we begin to mock that which is good. We do not, do not like to see another person achieve Christ-likeness. And so we try to drag that individual down. This mockery can be part and parcel of our life, and we must examine our conscience concerning it. Second sign of the demonic. Anger and impatience. Anger and impatience. How many adults, when they have married, and they have children, and those children begin to grow, and they begin to uh, seek to express themselves. They receive the anger and wrath of mom and dad. Instead of mom and dad using opportunities where children make mistakes, and bringing that child through love to an understanding of how he should act, hence become a son of God or a daughter of God, instead they beat they come with the wrath of God. They themselves would never, ever think that God should treat them that way, but they will treat their children in such a way that the child begins to fear mom, fear dad, because they do not understand where this emotion, this wrath, this impatience comes from. Certainly, young people make mistakes. And I've worked with young people throughout my whole life, and I know they make mistakes, but they do it more out of just they're more out of uh, myopic vision rather than a understanding of what they're doing. And for that reason, the more we can guide them through reason, the more they come closer to the understanding of what God wants of them in their own lives. So check yourself in regards to this, this anger and impatience. Look at the doggone features in the movies. How much violence is presented? How many individual uh, dirty Harrys do you have around? Uh, guys that can just 
tear up everybody else because they're so violent. Well, let us consider violence and anger, impatience, as part and parcel of the demonic. Third, sensuality. The third sign of the demonic is that because we are created for happiness and God desires us in heaven, well, when we do not achieve that type of movement within our life, then we naturally go to that which can give us happiness. It is our body. So we give the body whatever we desire, whatever we think makes us happy. I had one woman who, in this particular case, uh, her sensuality will express itself by going out and buying shoes every day. Others will seek pornography. Others will seek lust. Somebody will go for sports. Whatever it is that gives that particular body an experience of happiness, that will be a sign that Satan is dominating. Because if I have the sense of God and God's presence, then I'm happy. I'm happy wherever I'm at. I'm happy because God is living within me. And I don't have to worry about anybody else judging me or considering me something low. I know that I have God who is guiding me and directing my thoughts, words, and deeds. And so, if I'm happy on the inside, it expresses itself in and through my life. If I'm not happy on the inside, then I'm going to seek something that will give my body some type of pleasure. Fourth sign. The fourth sign comes from the tongue. The tongue becomes critical, divisive. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so, one can very easily find out where one is at in the spiritual life. What do you talk about? In the school that I was at, in high school, there was a sign over the locker room door. The locker room door, we read, small minds speak of people. Mediocre minds speak of things and events. Great minds speak of ideals. The demonic mind criticizes. The demonic mind and heart seeks whatever it can from the other person to destroy the other persons. This is what we call, in the language of sin, detraction. We seek to destroy the reputation of another. Hence, we are destroying that person, and as we destroy that person, we are destroying ourselves in the process. These four signs need to be examined in our own spiritual life. How do I express my love for that which is good? If I see good in another individual, if I see good in another priest, I'm so happy to say I see good in this priest. And he shows me this example. I'd love to take that example and live by that example. If I can rejoice in the good, then I know my heart is with God. If I don't rejoice in the good, but rather rejoice in someone having difficulties, in someone having a cross, then most likely I am moving toward the demonic. If I find myself angry and impatient toward others, anger and impatience tells me that I'm no longer able to see things from the broader perspective. Every difficulty in the providence of God is a means for my soul to gain sanctifying grace by offering this difficulty for the salvation of a soul that is dying and in the state of mortal sin. Every Catholic can become a soul saver every day. If they go contrary to this mind of the demonic, which seeks to crush and kill and manipulate. Instead, we say there is something in this circumstances, there's something in this person that irritates me or causes me to fire up, but I will use this not to condemn, but rather to commend, to commend the soul that God has given to me at this particular time to be saved by the sacrifice of my life and by this prayer that I offer. 
That is why Our Lady of Fatima said to the children when she sold them, What hell is? A boiling cauldron of anger and impatience. She showed them that hell, and she said, Many souls are falling into this hell because they have no one to pray and make the sacrifice for them. When you get up in the morning, do you say to Almighty God, Oh Father, thank you for another day of life. Let me save a soul today. Give me some sacrifice that I might save a soul of a sinner who would fall into hell today unless I make this sacrifice and offer this prayer. You would be conquering the second act of the demonic in and through your desire to save souls. Third, the true Catholic realizes that this body and everyone else's body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. It is meant to be that which is the vehicle to the kingdom of heaven. It is a vehicle which we will find out in Dante's Purgatorio has to accept the difficulties and sufferings of this body as it grows older or as God designs it for a specific disease. In and through the body, the soul makes progress if the body will lose, lose itself in sanctifying itself through the cross of Christ. This is why we say spirituality is nothing more than the meaning that I give to the moment that I live in and through the vision of the cross of Christ. Through this cross, you and I conquer sensuality. Through this cross, you and I are able to represent for the world the example of Jesus Christ crucified and through that crucifixion, the sanctification of others. So, sensuality. Sensuality is not an option for the Catholic. Purity is that which conquers sensuality. And purity is a testament to Almighty God that we'll be faithful. Purity is a testament to my spouse that I will be faithful. This is the promise of purity, that not only will I see more clearly everything that is offensive to God, but I also will see that which is most pleasing to God. So purity is a vision, a vision that allows me to see into the eternity that God has prepared for those who love Him. And hence, I conquer the temporality that constantly says, do it. You know as well as I do, we are not animals. We are rational human beings with an immortal and immortal soul. And that immortal soul demands purity in order that it may grow and achieve that which is most important, the knowledge and love of God. Finally, it is the tongue. The tongue of the Catholic. The tongue of the Catholic realizes it must battle against the critical tongue of the world. Everything in this world seeks to destroy and that which destroys most is this boneless tongue. And hence, how do we control this boneless tongue? If a word is given to us of holiness, that word, fostered in the heart, guarded in the heart, produces an eternal being. Just like the seed that the angel Gabriel said to our Blessed Mother, the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit shall give you the seed that is necessary for the gift of giving God's Word flesh. The seed is God's Word. And so our Blessed Mother, in her purity, recognizes. And through perception, there is conception. Therefore, for us who are Catholic, following the pattern of Our Lady, the more we perceive truth in and through our reading of Scripture, in and through our listening to talks like this, the more we perceive the truth, the more that truth leads us to live our life in such a way that we are heaven-bound and not hell-bound. Heaven-bound, I am lifting up my brother and sister through my words. Hell-bound, I am casting them down, I am crushing them, I am criticizing them. And in condemning them, I am condemning myself, for as I judge others, so I shall be judged. The more I learn to forgive others their faults and failings, the more I will learn the forgiveness of God myself. Hence, the importance for the Catholic to have regular confession, 
and the importance for the confessor to guide that person who is confessing to a closer relationship, a closer friendship with our Lord Jesus Christ, so that our Lord Jesus Christ can do all things in and through that heart which is open to His grace. This is important for us to understand, to conquer the, this demonic that is threatening our days. We are going to see more demonic activity in the days to come. There is more of what we call infestation, which moves to obsession, which moves to possession. The movement of the evil one. I just want to emphasize this. Infestation is the first stage in our life of the demonic seeking to take us over. It will be exemplified by these things, one or more. Infestation then will move the soul because if the soul becomes attached to any one of these things, anger, sensuality, tongue, one of these things, it becomes obsessed. Once it's obsessed, then everyone begins to hide from you, begins to avoid you, because he's obsessed with sex, or he is obsessed with anger, he's obsessed with some type of evil. And this obsession then leads the individual to a possession, which we are seeing taking place more and more. In possession, all of these things are dominating. These four signs are dominating. So, the confessor can stop the thing right here with a good confession. One good confession eliminates that. When we get to obsession and possession, then we have a great deal of spiritual work to do. These demons are cast out by prayer and fasting. And so the priest must take time to realize where the particular sinner is at. If there is any kind of movement toward compassion in that sinner, any type of movement toward forgiveness of another in that sinner, then we have something to work with. Now we must ask the question, what is the difference between a man who is evil and a man who is bad? There is a difference. A person who is bad does bad things. He may murder, commit an abortion, he may steal, he may uh, tear down another's reputation. These are bad acts committed by a bad man and they are usually acts that are individual one after the other. But then there is evil. Evil comes from the devil. Evil men. They seek to destroy the soul. Kill the souls of young, innocent. This is evil. These evil men Nowadays, promote pornography. These evil men promote the destruction of the Catholic Church. These evil men promote all things that are destructive to that which is eternal. Can these evil men be in the church? Yes. In fact, more so in the church than outside of the church. You take for granted the idea that, oh, we have a pope, we have bishops, we have cardinals, and we have them in our minds intellectually as if they're all good saintly men. In reality, what about a pope who goes contrary to that which a holy saintly pope said in order that that saintly holy pope ideas may not generate themselves into the youth of today? For example, St. Pius X. He told each and every one of us in Pascendi exactly what was going to take place with those who are modernist. These modernists he calls evil because they are destroying the integrity of the Catholic faith. Modernist. They are the enemies of the church. Do they want to be the enemies of the church? Probably not. But they are enemies of the church nonetheless because of what they hold. Hence, we do not judge them in their hearts because only God can do that. But we judge what they say 
and what the fruit of their action is. Modernism is the sum total of every heresy. Heresy narrows the truth. It causes the truth to collapse. And therefore, anyone who promotes the heresy promotes the lack of understanding that a soul is going to be condemned because this error will lead not to heaven but to hell. We are, as we say, in a church crisis. A crisis unprecedented. And the crisis is ultimately one between Satan and our Lord Jesus Christ. Satan has infiltrated the Catholic Church. Belladad recognized it, exposed it to Bishop Sheen. We have Masons who have converted and told us the Masons are in the Catholic Church. They seek to destroy the doctrine. Belladad told us you will not know the Catholic Church in 40 years, and it has happened. Saul Alinsky has presented us in Chicago with the rules of revolution, radicalism. And this liberalism that he has presented has gone into Cardinal Bernadine. And Cardinal Bernadine, in an act which we call uh, the Renewal Program, sent these ideas that are communistic, these ideas that are Marxist, into every parish to renew the parish into a new way of looking at the world. It is the Marxist-Socialist method. So much so that in the Vatican II, we have what is known as a construct which destroys the Catholic family, destroys the Catholic Church's structure, and brings us into a situation in which we say we must reject that which is poisonous, that which kills. We do not do it out of malice, or we do not do it in anger. We do it because we must hold on to the truth, or only the truth will set us free. I'm hoping that this brief presentation in regards to the demonic, which could be expanded, because certainly we can see the demonic activity within the Catholic Church, within the hierarchy, within the priesthood. We see it in this question of homosexuality, pedophilia, in other words, our sensuality going out of control, whether you're a priest, whether you're a brother or sister, whether you're a layman or not, you all must follow the same pattern to get to heaven. That is the purity of heart and soul and body. Purity in thought, word and deed. And so anyone who promotes this wonderful virtue today is looked upon as a prude. But this virtue is most needed in our world today that young people can come to conquer Satan only if they can see purely through his deceits and thus create in themselves a center for the Divine Trinity, the Holy Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In doing so, Satan is cast out. He cannot be where God the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost remain. He cannot be where the blood of Christ is invoked. And so if you are tempted by Satan in any way, shape, or form, simply close your eyes and image the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And allow the blood of this cross to flow down and fill your entire thought. Every one of the engrams in your mind. Every cell in your mind. And then let that blood flow into your heart. And that blood flow from your heart to every cell in your body. Imagine it. Pray it, and you will see, by the cross you shall conquer the evil one who threatens. For Jesus has given us his word, and the Father has told us, I am who am, eternally present, eternally loving. Satan always says, I am who am not. You deny his presence, he shall conquer you. Recognize his presence, and know who it is that has conquered him, and you too shall conquer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.